Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sabrina Kofer, and on behalf of PLA, I'd like to welcome you to today's program, Empowering Communities with Creativity, Craft, and Hobby, which is sponsored by Craft and Hobby. Before we get started, I'd like to point out just a few features of the webinar software. All of the attendees who join the presentation are automatically muted and your cameras are off, so don't worry about generating any noise or feedback. We've got that taken care of for you. In the main area of the screen, you can follow along with the presentation materials. To adjust the size of the slides or video, you can use the divider in the middle of the screen to slide the sizes to your liking. Uh, we are using the Q&A feature today. Please use it to ask questions of our speaker. Um, we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation, so please do type your questions into the Q&A module as they occur to you. You can also use the upvote feature to highlight questions that you like or would like to be addressed. Also, there is closed captioning available for today's session. To toggle the automated captions on or off, please use the CC button on the bottom right corner of the screen. Last, please note that we are recording today's program and everyone who registered should receive a follow-up email with a link to the archive version. And with that, we're ready to get started. So I will hand it over to Joey Kaiser, who is the Director of Craft and Hobby and the main contact for anything Craft and Hobby related. So Joey, over to you. Great, thank you all for being here today. We are so excited to have you all here. I know everyone's schedules are busy, um, but we are going to talk a little bit about in this webinar, the evolution of libraries, as well as the power of creativity as a resource. From there, I'm going to take you through a live demo and a snapshot of some of our craft and hobby classes. So like I said, feel free to drop questions in the chat along the way, and we hope you enjoy today's webinar. So moving on. Yep. Why it's so important to invest in creativity. So libraries have always been hubs of knowledge, learning, and discovery. But in today's fast-paced world, it's more important than ever for libraries to stay relevant and responsive to the needs of their communities. And one of the most effective ways to do this is by investing in creativity. And there are a number of things that creative resources can do for your library, and I'm just going to outline them below. Number one, it encourages innovation. Creativity can lead to innovation, which is essential for libraries to stay relevant and responsive to the needs of their communities. By thinking outside the box and experimenting with new ideas, libraries can develop new programs, services, and technologies that better serve their patrons. Number two, it promotes engagement. Creativity can help libraries engage with their communities in new and exciting ways. By offering creative programs and services, libraries can attract a wider range of patrons and create a more vibrant and dynamic space for learning and discovery. Number three, it supports learning. By encouraging creativity, libraries can help patrons develop critical thinking skills, problem solving abilities, and a deeper understanding of the world around them. Creative activities such as art, writing, and design can also help patrons express themselves and explore new ideas. Number four, it enhances access. Developing new and innovative ways to present information and sharing knowledge, libraries can make their collections more accessible to a wider range of patrons. For example, digital media labs can provide access to equipment and software for creating digital content. And then point five, it inspires imagination. By fostering creativity, libraries can help patrons explore new ideas and perspectives, discover new interests, and develop a lifelong, lifelong love of learning. Creating activities can also be a source of inspiration and relaxation, helping patrons to reduce stress and improve their overall well-being. The next slide. So the power of creativity as a resource. So to ensure the success of library evolution, it is crucial to create inspiring and attractive services for libraries, collections, activities, and spaces. A study found that the importance of providing innovation and creativity services in libraries exhibited the following. It helps people in the community find work by offering training and creative programs. Resources such as these have a great impact on building self-confidence, and self-esteem and eliminate the feeling of isolation. 
Also, community participation activities can also promote cooperation, love, and responsibility towards the community, which can increase social cohesion and discourage exclusion. And then slide three, video consumption is on the rise. So one of the reasons for this is the increasing availability and accessibility of video content, particularly through online platforms. Video content can be engaging and interactive. As technology continues to evolve, it is likely that video will continue to play an increasingly important role in education and training. And so below are some stats to back it up. 79% of respondents said streaming platforms makes them feel happy. 58% of respondents in a survey by Google reported that they are using digital video to learn new skills. And on average, people are watching 17 hours of online video content per week. So why is video so popular for e-learning? Video content can be engaging and interactive, which can help learners stay focused and retain information better than traditional methods, such as reading a textbook or attending a lecture. Video also plays, video also allows for visual demonstrations of concepts and processes, which can be particularly helpful for le learning in fields such as science and engineering and the arts. The ability to pause, stop, rewind, and learn at your own pace is also a very attractive feature for people trying to learn a new skill or a technique. And additionally, makerspaces create a culture of creativity and curiosity. Makerspaces are creative collaborative spaces that provide individuals with access to tools, materials, and technology to support learning and innovation. Libraries have been at the forefront of the makerspace movement, as they have historically been places of learning and community gathering. Here are some of the benefits of makerspaces in, li in libraries. It promotes hands-on learning. Makerspaces promote hand-on learning and allow individuals to learn by doing. This type of learning can be beneficial for children and teens who may struggle in a traditional classroom setting. It encourages creativity and innovation. Makerspaces provide a place for people to experiment and explore new ideas. They offer access to a wide range of tools and materials that can spark creativity and encourage innovation. They foster collaboration and community. Makerspaces encourage collaboration and provide a space for people to work together on projects. This can create a sense of community and belonging. They also support STEM education. Makerspaces often include tools and materials related to science, technology, and engineering and math fields. This can help promote STEM education and prepare individuals for careers in these fields. Makerspaces also provide access to technology that may be too expensive or difficult to obtain elsewhere. This can help bridge the digital divide and provide access to technology um, that where they might not be able to get it at home. Overall, makerspaces and libraries can provide individuals with access to tools, materials, technology to support learning, creativity, and innovation. The new hybrid model of makerspaces. So according to a survey of 51 US libraries, over half of makerspaces, 51% consider laptops and computers as core tools, and 25% mention tablets indicating a significant portion of making involves digital products. Additionally, 28% of the surveyed libraries created take and make kits for a program delivery during the pandemic and plan to continue this offering, while 20% produced pre-recorded videos. And a California, Californian librarian said, Maker programming that showcased participants' creativity were most successful because it gave patrons an expressive outlet and a way to connect with the community. And here are some advantages of digital libraries. It's a wide variety of content that is available to patrons. Digital libraries allow patrons to use resources 24 seven without changing their location. Many organizations digitize their libraries in order to make digital resources available to a large number of patrons on a consistent basis, which reduces resource depletion. 
And additionally, digital libraries will not completely replace the physical existence of documents, but digitization must be introduced so that libraries become hybrid in nature. And then library collections are larger and more digital than ever. In 2018 and 2019, digital collections made up over half of all collections. However, video content within digital collections has remained stagnant at 5%, despite the increasing demand for online video. Utilizing video and e-learning can increase retention rates by 25 to 60%. Fresh, new, or unique, or unique content was cited as the second reason for increased video usage overall. Now we're introducing our newly launched product of Craft and Hobbies. So Craft and Hobby is an instructional video platform designed specifically for libraries. We aim to help patrons connect with their passions by offering the largest on-demand catalog of classes and instructional articles in the Craft and Hobby space. There are millions of makers in the world including baking, drawing, cooking, crochet, woodworking, painting, knitting, and the list goes on. So with Craft and Hobby, you will have the opportunity to serve these di diverse makers in your community by giving them unlimited access to nine plus online learning libraries, 4,000 plus hours of content and 20 different creative disciplines. And there are a couple of things that make us very unique. So um, anytime, any device. So because our platform is web-based, patrons can access Craft and Hobby from any internet device and all classes are on demand. So you can watch anytime and anywhere. And we often see folks using their tablets or phones alongside them as they follow the classes. You also get unlimited access. So with Craft and Hobby, your patrons will have unlimited access to all of the instructional content. So they can take as many classes as they want in, as they want in as many different categories as they want. And then quality instruction. So we actually have leading experts in their craft genre that have been selected to produce quality content classes within their depth of instruction. And I should note that all of our content is family safe and accessible for all ages. And so now I'm gonna take you over a quick demo of uh, our site and take you and show, show off some of our classes. Okay, confirming everyone can see my screen. Yep. Awesome. So here's a quick snapshot of our site. As I mentioned, we serve many interests in over 20 different categories, such as quilting, fitness, paper craft, gardening, and photography, to name a few. So I'll go ahead and click into painting and drawing as an example. And with classes from beginner to advanced, we have makers covered whether they are just diving into a new hobby or if they have been making for years and are looking to level up. So you can see here, even within painting and drawing, there's tons of classes, whether you're looking for colored pencil or painting with acrylic um, or improve your paintings and the list goes on and on. And I will say another really nice feature is uh, patrons can toggle based on their skill or what they're looking to do. So if I'm interested in landscape, I can toggle to the landscape section. I can toggle to color mixing. So it really provides patrons the ability to select classes of their interest and in what they want. So now we're gonna go into some of our classes and this one is cookie decorating season by season. And you'll see this is a project-based class with all of our spring cookies, summer cookies, fall cookies. So depending on the time of the season, patrons can dive in. So this is with Ann Yorks, who has more than 10 years of cookie decorating experience under her belt. She finds joy in creating cookies by providing the right tools and great tutorials. She is passionate about educating and equipping you, the cookie artist. As you can see, this class is project-based. So um, in each lesson, it is a distinct project. And projects are more like a story versus than a reference book. So I'll go ahead and play the class preview. The sweet thing about decorated cookies is they're always in season. 
Welcome to Cookie Decorating Season by Season. I'm Ann Yorks. You'll be inspired and empowered to decorate no matter the time of year. You'll find useful templates and recipes in the downloadable materials. So now, let's kick off our cookie decorating year. Watching this class always makes me hungry. Next, we're gonna go into the flower class, uh, the flower kitchen. This is a really fun class. With this class, patrons can surround themselves with beautiful blooms. Carly's cylinder demonstrates easy, approachable methods to building breathtaking bouquets in your own kitchen. You will learn how to visualize arrangements, pick the perfect blooms, and ex expertly style them. I'm Carly Solander. I'm a floral designer to the stars, and I'm here to prove that you don't have to be a celebrity to surround yourself with beautiful blooms. I call myself the flower chef because I approach floral design like a recipe, step by step, and with the flexibility to add a dash of your own taste. It's all about expressing what you're like, so express yourself. I wanna show you that floral design is easy, accessible, and approachable, even in your own kitchen. Great, and then I do wanna say with Crafts and Hobby, we offer great content in our online, online library of resources. So in this catalog, your patrons will have access to the Knitting Circle, Creative Crochet Corner, National Quilter Circle, Artist Academy, National Sewing Circle, Creative Cake Design, Outdoor Photography Guide, Woodworkers Guild of America, and Get Healthy UTV. And with our startup library, patrons can successfully get started on a new hobby or craft. So in this class, join New York City's ballet's Tyler Peck at the ballet bar with this beginner class. With every exercise, find length in your lines and execute each step with energy and control. Welcome back. We're gonna go through another bar class. I like to always start with the same plies just because I feel like I like to ease my way into class. Here we go with the porter rub. Fingertips to the last. Scoop something up. Good. Up to go back. In, in, in. Good. Down, down, down. Good. Make sure that's crossed. The tondu right in front of your nose. It's good. We want to show the difference between the one slow and the two quick. A little deeper plie. Good. Shoulders stay down. Especially the one at the bar. Good. Envelope. Pay in. Good. One, two, three. I love this class too because it shows you the breadth of our content. We've got even things like yoga, hit classes within our fitness category. You can learn to do the cha cha, lots of different dance classes as well. Another startup library class we have, um, and I wanna showcase that we've got everything from a two minute class. So if you're just looking to learn a new technique or if you're looking to dive in, we've got everything from two to five hour classes. Um, so you can really kind of learn at your own pace. And then want to learn how to crochet, but you're not sure where to start, Crochet Corner is the place for you. Learn how to do basic tips and tricks for crochet, which will make your crochet projects easier, and even help you to give your finished item a cleaner, more polished look. So in this video, like I said, it's just a quick tutorial video that shows you how to do the magic fashion, fasten off. There are lots of different ways to do things in crochet. But if you learn a few little tips and tricks, it'll make your crochet that much more beautiful and even easier. Hi, I'm Karina Ferguson, and in this video, we're going to learn how to do the magic facet off for your crochet projects. So we finished off of all of our decreases and we're ready to do the magic fasten off. The magic fasten off is perfect for closing up small diameters like this. We want it to kind of mimic what we've got on the bottom of the ball. So we're going to cut our yarn to a reasonable length and then we're going to thread this cotton, <laughs> which does not like to go into tapestry needles for me. We're going to thread this into a tapestry needle. 
Um, and one thing I do want to say is you can see how nice and beautiful these shots are, how we get up close shots. Everything is filmed out of our headquarters in Minneapolis. And like I said, we source the best of the instructors and we film everything in house. And now with our advanced expert led classes, patrons can level up on any craft or skill or the, if they're looking to take, take it something to the next level, whether that be a 30 minute skill based class or a two to five hour in depth class in their category of choice. And do you love work, woodworking, but you're ready to take your table saw skills to the next level? This class will take you through advanced techniques with your table saw. You'll be amazed by what you can do. I really enjoy teaching advanced table saw techniques because I've seen students watch some of the stuff and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could even do that on a table saw. So let me walk you through what's coming at you in this class. I'm going to show you a lot of shop made jigs, including this one. This is for doing vertical raised panels on the table saw. Allows you to cut a really large profile, really good for large scale work. And if you don't have the ability to do raised panels on your router table. Pattern cutting is really cool. We can take any template that you can create, cut multiples that are all exactly the same size. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to cut really small strips like this. Techniques that allow you to have the guard in place, micro adjust the size of those strips. Whether the board is short or long, you're going to come out of this class with a technique that allows you to make strips like this. Now, one thing that's really cool and I know people like is cove cutting on the table saw, producing profiles that look like this. We can use this on the edge of a panel for a raised panel. We can also plunk it into the center of a panel for doing coves like this, like a pencil tray in a drawer. One of the things that really lights up students' eyes is when we cut circles on the table saw. This is really cool. Yes, you can do it. Simple shot made jig. We're also going to go through tapered legs and how to make that jig. So a lot of techniques that are going to make your eyes light up and are invaluable to you as a woodworker because they're really going to enhance your woodworking skills. So join us in the class. A lot of great stuff coming your way. And then lastly, I'm going to take you through mastering a minutes modeling chocolate. I do want to say with every class, it gives um, an overview to your class. Every class is accompanied with bonus materials. So if you're cooking, you need the recipe. If you're knitting, you need the pattern. So we do provide all of the bonus materials. Patrons can print that out, take it to the store with them, or just reference it for their class. And this one is master modeling and chocolate, master modeling uh, chocolate. So in this in-depth class with Rachel Twofold, an extra expert pastry artist and cake designer, she enjoys translating any type of inspiration into an original cake design, specifically with modeling chocolate. And you can see here how all the classes are broken out. It makes it very, very approachable um, in a step-by-step -step basis. And now I'll go ahead and play a preview here. I know modeling chocolate can be a little scary at the start, but with some guidance, you'll be melting, seizing, kneading, and coloring your way to a whole new world of delicious design possibilities. Mastering in Minutes, a new series of video tutorials designed to help you up your game in less than 30 minutes. It may seem intimidating, but in some ways, modeling chocolate is really simple. You can dive right in using stuff you already own. That means minimal planning, lots more learning, and tons more making. That's Mastering in Minutes. What I love about modeling chocolate is it just gives you so much depth and dimension to your decorating. And I do want to point out, as you just saw, we do have courses that are popular with men in the craft and hobby space. Um, as you just saw with Woodworkers Guild of America, which dives into the intricacies of woodwork and follows projects from beginning to end. We also have Outdoor Photography Guide, which is another great addition for men who love to take great photos while out and about. So 
that wraps our demo for the day. Or I, I'm going to kick it back over to Sabrina. Thank you, Sabrina. If we want to pull the slides back up, I can talk, talk you through. Yep. So with craft and hobby, we want to say onboarding is easy for all of you. So here's what we need to know. Are you part of a federation? And if so, what one? Or do you use a SAML-based authentication system or SSO? Um, so from there, it's easy as logging into your system and entering the scope and entity ID to get craft and hobby added to your resources. Um, if you don't know the answers to any of these questions, you can absolutely reach out to me. I can work with my internal tech team to get you guys launched and started. Um, with that, I want to kick it over and I want to ask if you all have any questions for me. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Joey. Yeah, it looks like we already have some questions in the Q&A box. So I just encourage our attendees, if you have a question, please feel free to submit it. So we can just jump right in. Uh, let's see. Uh, first popular question here is, do you offer a free trial period and how does the pricing structure work? Yes, we do offer a free trial period. It is a two week trial. If you want to um, get set up with that, go ahead and email me down below. You'll see my email on the screen there, jkaiser at tnmarketing.com, and I can go ahead and set you up with a free trial. Our pricing is based off of library circulation, so it's a tiered pricing system. So again, if you want to follow up with me based on your circulation, I can go ahead and let you know what the annual fee would be. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, next question here. Um, what does premium mean on some of the videos? Yes, yeah, so you guys will have access to all of the premium content. Um, I will say, and I, I see a question here too that I want to cover off on. Are you affiliated with Craftsy in any way? We are. So um, our parent company is TN Marketing. We own Craftsy along with 16 other different sites um, in the passion and hobby space. And so we went ahead and created this product that was inclusive of Craftsy plus all the different sites. So we've actually been around for over 15 years as a consumer facing product. Hence why we've got so many great classes, such great content. Um, and this was, this was a product that we created specifically specifically for libraries, because we heard from librarians, the more content, the better, the larger breadth of content, the better. So we wanted to go ahead and take all of the content from all of our great sites and combine it into one product for all of your patrons to enjoy. Got it. Okay. Great. So you know the question here, um, how diverse are your instructor instructors and do you have a DEI, diversity, equity and inclusion initiative? Our instructors are very diverse. That is something that is very important to us. Like I said, we source the best of the best, um, but we also want to include diversity in our classes. Uh, we've launched Craftsy in Espanol, and that launched about two years ago. Um, and we, those are Hispanic-based instructors that speak um, Spanish language. So again, we want to be cognizant of that. Um, so it is something that is very important to us. Great, okay. Uh, next question here, um, do classes include safety instruction? Uh, yes, yeah, so if you are taking a woodworking class within your PDF and materials and along with the class too, they will give tips and tricks on how to remain safe, um, things that you can do to avoid any serious uh, things going wrong. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're providing all of that for you. So you can usually find that within the accompanying PDF or within the actual course content. Great. Okay. See another question here. Um, can users favorite classes or create a list of classes to save for later? So since this is a product that is built directly for libraries um, and patrons will be using their library credentials to sign in, they can make note of what classes and press play and pause. And if they want to start the class, you know, in the library setting, but finish it at home, they can absolutely do that. But in terms of favorite, favoriting classes, that is not a functionality within this platform because it is based on the library credentials. Um, so like I said, 
you can pause, you can play, you can watch at your own speed. Um, but in terms of favoriting classes, you cannot do that. Okay, got it. Let's see. Um, a popular question here is uh, from Catherine. I can't help but notice that Hobby is close to the store Hobby Lobby. Are you related? Just curious. <laughs> We are not related. That is a great question. We actually get that a lot. It just so happens our creative team happened to create a logo that was very similar to, to Hobby Lobby, um, but we are not affiliated with Hobby Lobby. Got it. Okay. Next question. Um, do, your, do your classes include subtitles? What about transcription for multiple languages? Yes, we do include subtitles. So that is an option that you can actually press on if you want the subtitles or if you want the transcript. Subtitles, we have, I believe, French Canadian um, right now in Spanish. So we'll look to expand that eventually down the road. But in terms of subtitles, it is just those two languages. Okay, got it. Let's see. Another question. Um, sorry if I missed this. The Sorry if I missed this at the beginning, but do users have unlimited access to videos or are there a certain certain number of views per month? That is a great question. And that is why we created Craft and Hobby. We know um, librarians prefer different models and methods. So with Craft and Hobby, um, this is an all you can eat buffet. Patrons will be able to access every single video um, at their own pace. So like I said, if they want to start in the library and finish at home or finish while they're on their European vacation, they can absolutely do that. Um, so it is, like I said, once you're in the platform, patrons can have access to everything. Got it. Okay, um, let's see. We have a couple of questions about creative bugs. So maybe one, are you affiliated with creative bug? And if not, maybe um, Michaela asks recommending a library to subscribe to craft and hobby versus creative bug. That's a great question. We are not affiliated with creative bug. Um, we differ from them in a couple different ways. One is breadth of content. Um, so we do offer more content and more diverse content. So like I said, we've got things like fitness, um, and photography. Uh, so really expansive um, collection of content. And the other thing is uh, all of our classes are accompanied with a PDF. So like I said, if you're taking a knitting class, you need the pattern. If you're taking a cooking class, you need the recipe. Um, so it makes it very, very easeable and approachable. We always say you're never going to have a Pinterest fail at Craft and Hobby um, because we do set every patron up for success. Great. Okay. Let's see. Another question here uh, from Julie who asks, are the instructors also authors whose books we can add into our catalog? You know, that's a great question. And I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but Julie, if you want to follow up with me and my email, I can go ahead and take that one back to our internal team and see if any of the instructors with our courses actually have books as well. Great. Okay. Um, Rihanna asks, this might be another thing that um, Rihanna can follow up with, but can you show us or share, can you show slash share us classes led by instructors of color as more examples? Thanks. Yes, yes. So Brianna, if you want to follow up with me, we can go through another brief demo and I can showcase all of the instructors that we have. Um, and you'll see that they, like I said, they're all across the board from young to old, um, to diverse, to men, to female. Um, so that is something that I can definitely um, take you, like show you on a, on, a, on a call if you want to reach out to me in the email. Great. Okay. Another question here. Um, can we use these? Can we use these videos as part of crafty programs that we run, such as using a crochet video in a crochet class? That is a great question. We encourage you guys to use these classes at the library or within your maker spaces. We know programming can be often difficult to find or expensive. Same with talent. It's not always easy to find the talent or get them in the door. Um, so we we absolutely love that you guys encourage you to take these classes, um, get people in the makerspace, get community into your library and, and take these classes uh, with craft and hobbies. So we, we love that idea. We're a great supplement to programming. Great, 
Okay. Um, let's see, we have another question here about pricing. Um, Sharon asks, can you share how price compares to Creative Bug or just give a sense of pricing for a large library system? Um, so I'm not sure how pricing compares to Creative Bug. I will say we did do a lot of research in the space um, to understand how other products are priced because obviously we want it to be affordable for you all. Um, so like I said, that is based on circulation. Um, just to give you an idea, I know you said large, but I'm going to go off for small. Um, so up to 25000 in circulation, the product starts at $9.99, so about $1,000 for the year. And then we scale up from there based on your circulation. Okay, great. Um, let's see another question here. Um, Jill asks, do you provide any usage statistics or reports so we can assess the value of this subscription? Yes, and that is a question that we've gotten a lot of recently, and I'm actually actively following up on that question. I know there will be statistics provided. I believe it's through the our, our platform that we're working with right now, Open Athens. Um, but like I said, if you want to follow up with me in an email, this is a question that I'm actively working on to find what types of statistics will be available for you all. We will have them. Um, I'm just confirming what ones those will be. Great. Okay. See another question. Um, what kind of customer support do you offer and do you help patrons directly? Uh, we offer all the customer support you need. So like I said, I work with a team of people. Um, I will be your main point of contact, but like if we need to loop in our tech team or whoever that be, we get things done, we get answers your way. So I loop in anyone necessary um, that I need to, to cover off on any questions that you may all have. Um, so like I said, if there's issues or questions, uh, we'll get those answered for you. And then there was a second part of that question. Oh yeah, uh, helping patrons directly. Oh yes, helping. Um, we, that's something, we ask that probably like you filter through the through the librarian for, through the library, but like I said, if any of your patrons are struggling or have questions, I am an available resource for you all to reach out to, so we can get get any answers that your patrons need. Got it. Okay, another question here: um, How do you vet your instructors? Yes, we source, like I said, the best of the best. And like I said, diversity is very important to us as well. Um, so it is just done through tons of research. We have a whole internal talent team that is doing this. Um, like I said, we've actually been around for about 15 years in the consumers uh, facing front. Um, so it is our talent team that is constantly researching, reviewing, vetting, and interviewing our instructors. Um, and then that is why that is why we have great instructors. We're, we are very prideful in that, um, just because we've got a whole talent team that backs this that backs it up. And like I said, sources the best of the best. There's a whole process that they go through to vet and determine who is the right talent for what classes we want to go after. Great. Okay, um, another question from Sarah who asks, can users get course completion certificates? That's a great question. Um, that is absolutely something I can follow up on. So if you want to email me that question, uh, I, I will put that in my queue to follow up if we can actually offer that for you all. Great. Okay, another question. Do you offer these types of classes for children? Yes, so our library is pretty expansive. We like to say that we serve elementary um, and high school libraries as well. It's quite funny, actually. There has been a huge trend coming back with things like crochet and knitting and macrame. Um, so we see a ton of high school students taking our classes as it relates to our fiber arts. Um, we do have some, uh, like I said, all of our content is fam uh, family friend or family friendly and safe. So um, we've got some classes that are actually taught by kids for kids. Um, things like a paper airplane class. So not only do you learn how to fly a paper airplane, you learn about the aerodynamics. We use a lot of science in our baking classes. Um, so science backed ba baking classes, which are really fun for students as well. 
Great. Okay, um, there's a couple of questions here. I think you talked about this a little bit earlier, um, just about accessing in, in the library versus at home. But Sarah asks, is this resource accessible for patrons from home? And Michaela, along those lines, says, so if a patron starts a video in the library and wants to continue at home, would it save their spot, so to speak, or would they have to start the video again from the beginning? Great questions. Yes, first and foremost, it is accessible at home. So patrons can log back on. That is the beauty of these digital resources. It doesn't lim limit them to just to the library. They can actually continue their learning at home, which is awesome. And we see a lot of patrons actually doing that. Um, you can pause and play. So if I started a class in the library and I go back on to that class, I can I can sign on at home. I can go to that class, and it's like I said, one of the beauty th the beautiful things about uh, learning from videos. You can pause, play, rewind, and really get an idea of what you need to do. Um, so it's easy for the patron just to kind of scroll ahead and find the point at which they paused and press play. So they don't have to start the video from the beginning. They can pick up, pick up from where they left off. Perfect, okay. Let's see. Um, I know you talked about multiple languages. Um, Robin asks, are the PDFs available in Spanish? Uh, we have transcripts, but the PDFs, are, that is something I, I know Craftsy and Espanol, all of our PDFs are available in Spanish. That is something I can follow up with you. So if you want to email me at the email on the screen, I will take that as another question that I can follow up internally on. Great. Okay, let's see. Um, we have another couple of questions about um, like library subscribers versus personal subscribers. So can you share the general pricing for library subscribers versus personal subscribers? And along those lines, do you provide the service to individual consumers? So Crafts and Hobby is an offering um, just for, for libraries. Um, so with that, it is, like I said, we're working with Open Athens right now. So if you use a SAML-based authentication system or SSO, we set you up in the system and um, patrons can sign on using their library cards. So all the pricing with Craft and Hobby is dependent on um, just libraries using it. And so, like I said, it is an upfront annual fee and that grants access to all of your patrons. So think of it like an all you can eat buffet. Um, so your patrons can use the site anytime. They can use it as much as they want. They can watch as many videos as they want. Um, so it is, so this, this craft and hobby offering is specifically for libraries. This is a product that we built. We've been working on for over a year now. And so we're actually so excited that we're live. Um, but this is a product craft and hobby is specific, specific, specifically meant for libraries and, and we incentivize pricing as such. Um, from the consumer facing standpoint, as I mentioned, some of those sites that, that are within craft and hobby, things like Craftsy, National Sewing Circle, those are all consumer faced uh, sites. Um, and that has a different pricing model. I just want to clarify one more time that Craft and Hobby is built out specifically for libraries. So like I said, for an upfront annual fee, that gets uh, your library set up with Craft and Hobby. And now all of your patrons at that library can access our product. Got it. Okay. Um, let's see, we have another pricing question about the amount per year increase in cost, uh, 2%, 5%. Um, and I know there's another question later on about like where to find pricing information, if that's also available. So we do not have pricing online. Um, if you guys want to email me, I can give you the pricing based on your circulation. I do want to say to another question that we've gotten often is, do you incentivize pricing? So if I commit for three years versus a year, um, can I get a bigger discount? And absolutely. Um, we can work with you based on the terms and how long you want to go out to market. Um, so if you say this is product looks awesome, this is something I know my library is going to use for the next three years. Let's go ahead and sign up for that. Uh, we can offer you discounts as such. Okay, great. Um, let's see, another question, can users make class suggestions? Um, 
this is one's a little bit trickier. I will say it's not as easy right now for patrons to make class suggestions. Uh, I will say that we have a whole content map mapped out for uh, this year and beyond into 2024. So we are continually filming new classes in our headquarters based on what we may see from demand on the consumer side. Um, so that is something that we are continually doing. Um, we've got, like I said, a huge roadmap to continue filming classes and are out of our headquarters in Minneapolis. And we'll continue to ingest the site with new classes as, as we get those up and running. Great, okay. Um, another question here, do you have an app that patrons can use? That's a great question. I, If you follow up with me, that is actually something that I'm actively looking into as well, as that was another question that we got recently. Um, so please email me that question and I'll make sure I get you that answer. Great. Okay, and then another question or sort of suggestion, could you include the list of presenters who are also authors in your next contact with us? Um, so just something to note. Yes. That sounds sure. great. Great. Um, let's see, another sort of user question. Is there a way to keep track of how many patrons use the platform? That should be something, that should be a statistic that's provided to you um, through our, uh, through Open Athens who we're working with. Again, I'm currently working to see what statistic and metrics will be provided, but I will note that as one something that you guys are interested in, because obviously you want to know if you're, if you're getting the bang for your buck and if your patrons are using this. And so understanding how many patrons are using this is a very important metric. Um, so we hear you on that one, and I'm working to see if that will be included as well, which I believe it will. Okay, great. Yeah, it looks like there's another question about like once that information is available, um, where that could be found or accessed. Yep, um, and so if they want to follow up with me, our, our, like I said, our, our tech team is working fast and furiously right now to get me answers to these <laughs> questions. Um, so like I said, we just launched two weeks ago, um, but please follow up with me when it comes to statistics and metrics based on um, the platform usage, and I will make sure that I get you all the answers you need. Perfect, okay. See, um, oh, speaking of how um, new it is, Caitlin just asked, how new is this program? Does any offer, does any library offer it yet? Yeah, so we actually just went live, like I said, two weeks ago. So we've been building out this, this platform, this program for over the past year, um, based on all the sites that our parent company, TN Marketing, owns. Um, so it is very, very new from a direct offering to libraries, which we're, we're super excited about. Um, I have been touring the country <laughs> at all the library conventions. So I was just in Austin um, two weeks ago. My team members will be in Florida in two weeks. Um, we'll be in Chicago in June. Um, so we've got a, a long roadmap ahead of us in terms of what conferences that we're going to be at. We've been giving demos to librarians in anticipation of our launch. Um, so we are actually working on some live um, agreements as we speak. Um, so we're excited to start to get some libraries up and running in the system. Great. Okay, let's see, um, sort of rapid fire questions here. I know you talked about other languages. I think you said French is available, but do you offer other languages such as French? Uh, I do not believe so, but again, that is something I want to follow up on on my end. So please feel free to email me and I'll make sure I get you that answer. Great. Another question, is there a limit on concurrent users? Nope, no limits. Okay, great. Um, another, there's another couple questions about skill level. So can you filter courses by skill level and um, are most classes suitable for total beginners? Absolutely. So you can filter by skill level, whether that be beginner, advanced, and absolutely. That's, that is why I am so passionate about our site. Um, if you've never, ever done anything in, in a certain category before, you can learn how to get started with craft and hobby. 
All of our categories have startup libraries. So like I said, if you've never picked up knitting needles before and you're just learning to start to knit, it, we teach you how you should hold the needle, uh, knitting needles. How do you cast on? What kind of yarn you should use to make your uh, knits the most like precise? So again, it is all very, very approachable for patrons to come in, never having taken anything and actually master that category. So we've had, we have so many um, people on the, on the consumer uh on the consumer side that, have, like I said, have never taken anything and now they're, they're a master of sewing or they're a master of knitting. So we make it super easy for patrons to get started. Great. Okay, um, there are a couple questions about the authentication, authentication systems. Um, so if I don't have SM, uh, SM, sorry, S-A-M-L or S-S-O, um, can I use Craft and Hobby? So, and I think there are a couple of questions like that. Yep. So uh, yes, please email me. We are actually working with a couple libraries right now that do not use SAML-based um, authentication systems. So I am actively working with my tech team on how we guys, how we can get you all up and running. Um, so if you do not use a SAML-based system but want Craft and Hobby as a resource in your library, please reach out to me because the demand is there and we have um, our tech team uh, exploring active solutions for us to get you guys launched within your library. Great. Okay. Um, another question, is there a liability waiver or insurance coverage for classes that have a certain amount of risk, such as fitness or dance or uh, working with power tools? There is not. Got it. Okay. Um, another question, is there, I think you talked a little bit about um, support, but is there IT support just in case? Yes, there is IT support. Like I said, we have a, a huge team over at Crafts and Hobby. I've got a, an expansive tech team that I work directly with, who um, I am their primary, um, like I said, if I have anything that needs to be solved from a tech standpoint, they are on it. Um, so uh, we have a huge tech team that we work with to get those things solved. Great. Uh, let's see, time for a few more questions. Um, when looking at the website under Craftsy, it shows videos that are gold exclusive. So first, is Craftsy a separate subscription? And second, what is a gold exclusive video slash class? Yes, so that is just technically, those are classes that we've ingested from the Craftsy side or from the TN marketing side. And so those are upgraded classes for those users, but you guys having Craft and Hobby will receive access to all of the premium and gold classes. I do wanna say that. Um, one other thing is Craft and Hobby um, is available at a certain rate and then Craft, uh, Craftsy and Craftsy in Espanol is a small upgrade but we are running a special right now since we are new. We are incentivizing libraries that can sign up by the end of June. They'll get the price of craft uh, of craft and hobby with Craftsy and Craftsy in Espanol, well, in Espanol included at the base price. Um, so if you're interested in subscribing or if you might... If you if you're working on a different fiscal, let me know. I'm happy to accommodate you and see what I might be able to make happen um, and circle back internally on that. Great. Okay. Um, other question: Is there a course history kept for each user so they can look back on what they've done, and can users curate their own list of courses like a wish list? Within Craft and Hobby, not at this time because it is based off of a SAML based SSO authentication, um, there is no way that the patrons can favor or personalize their profile at this time. Got it. Okay, um, another couple questions about sort of offerings. So how many total classes do you offer and will you be adding future classes? And someone also asked if there are other dancing classes besides ballet. Yes, so we have over, um, 2,000 classes, over 4,000 hours of content. Uh, and we've got tons of different uh, classes within dancing. Like I said, we've got things like the cha-cha, the two-step, ballet. Um, I'm actually getting married in a couple of weeks and I'm taking a class with my dad right now on site. So um, there are a lot of fun classes to take in terms of the, the dancing category. Awesome, okay. 
Uh, let's see. I think we're right up close to um, the end, but I saw, I did see a question about the recording. So just so everyone knows, we are recording the session and all registrants should have access to the recording after the program. Um, but I think, Joey, I think we can launch um, some oh, of the polls, if yeah, that sounds and I just want to say one quick thing. Um, first of all, thank you all for attending. I, I know we have so many questions happening over in the chat. Um, I see there's an Omaha-based uh, librarian here, and she wants an in-person demo. Uh, if there are any other questions, that's absolutely something I can do. If there's any other questions that didn't get covered off on this, please reach out to me. I'm happy to hop on a quick call, a hop, quick Zoom call, or even just communicate via email with you. Um, so like I said, if your question didn't get answered, um, or if you want a live demo again, reach out to me and we will get that scheduled for you. Perfect. And now we're going to go into the poll. Yep. It just launched the first two. Awesome. So our first poll question is, does your library have a maker space? Yes, no, or in the process of building one. And then to accompany of that, do you have tools in your maker space? And then we'll okay. go over the results. Great. Okay. A couple more seconds. All right. Awesome. So it's about half and half, um, a little bit more, either have them or in the process of building them, um, which is great. We've also talked to so many librarians that don't have a makerspace, but also love to take classes as, as a community in their library. So they'll often just set up a little, um, like a little class uh, around a table in the library. So uh, makerspaces are awesome, but I obviously understand there are ways to build community without one as well. Um, and then do you have tools in your makerspace? It sounded like the majority said no, but a lot are saying yes. So we know that tools like sewing machines and, and crickets and all that are, are very good because they provide resources that you might not find at home. Um, we talked a little bit up in this uh, webinar today about the popularity of digital assets. So out of curiosity, how popular are digital assets in your library? And then do you see demand for more video resources in your library? Okay, that's good. Awesome. Very popular or gaining popularity, which is awesome. Um, we know there are a lot of advantages to digital resources, more over video resources. I love that you're seeing an increasing demand for that. Um, digital is obviously a great way to provide the patron access to learning opportunities outside the library. Um, so, and like I said, the, the rise of video is becoming very popular too because um, so he learned off to learn a new craft or to learn a new hobby. People like to stop, rewind, play, and really get a sense of the next step that they need to take. So we're so excited that, that, that they're all gaining popularity or they're very popular. Great. Okay. And last poll question here. The last question. Do you all see value in investing in creative resources for your patrons? Absolutely or no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's about everyone. Okay. Yay! <laughs> Majority does. So that's that's great. So um, obviously creativity does a lot as it pertains to innovation, as it pertains to stress relief, um, and as it pertains to learning. So we were so thankful to have you all here today. Like I said, if there are any questions that we didn't get to, um, or if you'd like to schedule another demo or even a phone call with me, 
feel free to reach out at the email listed on the slide and I will be happy to cover off on anything. I look forward to hopefully speaking with you all soon. Um, and thank you all again for attending today's webinar. Yeah, thanks, Joey. I'll just echo you and say thank you for taking the time to present and speak with us today. Uh, thank you to our attendees for your questions and comments. Um, I'd like to remind our viewers that we did record today's program, so be on the lookout for a follow-up email from Zoom with a link to the recording. Also, if you have a few minutes after the presentation to fill out a brief survey, we would really appreciate it. So thanks again to all of you out there for joining us. We hope you learned something new from the session and hope to see you again in the near future on another webinar. Thank you.